Ultra kill. This game is quite normal as you can see. In this game you play as a robot whose canon voice is this. Oh no. V1 is basically Pathfinder but stronger, faster and more fucking. This game is pretty much any other FPS but in 2x speed. This game is Doom and Devil May Cry combined but in 2x speed. This is one of the most horrible video games I've ever played and that's some of the most horrible bosses in more ways than one. And I'll be ranking them today. I'm not the best at this game as you can see but my skills are fast considering it was my first playthrough. I will be ranking the bosses on the basis of that. I'll be including basically every box until Act 2 except King Minos. I'll rank Minos when this canon that he has a map for CP. So yeah, now that we've done that out of the way, these are all the ultra kill bosses ranked from first to best. Number 14, Malicious Face. It's a fucking head. You really can't expect a lot from it. He has two attacks, both of which can be parried, even the malicious raid cannon attack if you punch the head just as he's about to pulverize you. After you beat him, he becomes a pretty common enemy and it kinda becomes mandatory to parry the living shit out of this guy if you want to survive some of the late game encounters where there are two of these with a hundred other fuckers trying to ultra kill you. Yet another quote on quote boss fight which turns into a common enemy after you beat them. This fight really doesn't have a lot going on. They both have 3 moves, a ground pound, a dash and one where he just throws his ball straight at your face. Something I'm quite familiar with, didn't really have an amazing childhood. But that's besides the point, after you have one of the guard dogs HP, the other joins the fray which makes this obnoxiously small as arena feel even more compact. But this gank ends really quickly and if you are not able to end this in under 10 seconds, you die. As simple as that. Conversely speaking, after you end him, his brother gets a little angry and expectedly starts going berserk, making me hate this arena even more. This is when you realize the real boss is actually the arena itself. It's a really simplistic yet fun mini boss battle, except the arena. Fuck the arena. Sissy Insurrectionist, aka the Ballsack dude. I mean, his Ballsack is his biggest characteristic, except the fact that he has to show his middle finger to Isaac Newton every 5 seconds. <laughs> That's it, really. He doesn't do a lot, except swinging his Ballsack around and jumping around like a maniac. Bohut's machine, a very cool boss which also turns into an enemy in the late game is really fun to fight. He does a 1-2-3 combo which can and will cover the entire arena. He can throw his sword at you, do a leap attack and my personal favorite is when he throws his sword and it spins around him and just looks really cool. All around, it's a cool boss. Ferryman, uh, another really fun boss fight, but he just let me walk all over him. But hey, if that's how he likes it, I won't complain. Considering everything, I can relate. After the first phase, I actually got confident or reckless, and instead of waiting for him to come to me, I buried my shotgun straight in his face with the help of the grappling hook. And I have to say that it made me feel really cool, and almost like I was a real boss, and considering everything, V1 is very strong, which is something we will be discussing later on. It's ironic that Ganon's difficulty acted as a negative, but at the same time, ameliorated the experience of fighting him fearlessly. Number 7. Hideous Mass. The first time I fought this thing, I spent like 2 minutes just figuring out what the fuck this thing was. And I still don't know. 
it's like a bayonetta boss fused with a scorpion and a grappling hook and that is my interpretation of what this abomination is extra points for making it unique if you get hit by the grappling hook it's best to just shoot the source just like i did in this footage except that it has this shockwave attack and the one way it launches projectiles akin to bombs in the air which track you and will land on your head if you don't move quickly and then when it has lost two thirds of its health it just fucking goes crazy shooting projectiles constantly and moving at a at a breakneck speed until it bursts into nothingness beyond the mechanics i like the music and the arena overall a pretty good boss fight even though it lacks attack variety and i do not even want to talk about that abominable mistake of a gang boss fight number 6 mysterious druid knight and his straight man of an hour the arena is surrounded by cocktails of youtubers like mark employer <laughs> You should kill yourself now. I mean that with a hundred percent, with a thousand percent. But the one thing that really lands them is, is this. Four on them. What the fuck? Number 5 Leviathan. First of all, the atmosphere of this boss is top tier from the build up to the arena. It feels like you're having an epic battle with a renowned beast. At least that's the feeling this boss gives me. It does only 3 attacks where it can either start up the machine gun resting in its mouth or very gently come close to you so you can heal up. It wants a fight to be fair, you know. And I like that. And the other is this tail swipe. This boss's difficulty is not that crazy especially after you learn to use these grappling hook points efficiently somewhat but when this fight gets interesting is in the second phase where it starts doing the tail swipe in tandem with the other attacks giving it almost a gang boss feel and it's good actually my favorite part of the fight and it's simple why it lets you learn these moves and avoid these efficiently enough if you want to survive the first phase and ask you to handle them together in the second phase it's good boss design which could have been better if it had a bigger health bar and more dance but i'm satisfied plus it's death scene is cool as fuck Number 4 the corpse of king minos or minos i don't know this much much easier version of king minos is his corpse which is in very surprising even with his daunting size because gaming has taught me that smaller and faster opponents can ultra kill you just as badly as big and slow ones but that does not mean that king minos is a pushover on the contrary he can crush you quite easily if you let him but The thing is, V1 is quite fast and quite strong. If you want to, you can just have a boxing match with this dude. Like seriously, adding such a small mechanic like parrying the attacks of Minos changes the fight completely, or at least how you approach it. Now your entire focus will be on positioning yourself, trying to parry him, failing, sticking your face in his hands and shotgunning them to heal yourself, trying again, failing, and then at least one time succeeding flying in the air for a short while and then repeating this is ultra kill no other game can do what it can do but that doesn't end the fight it just ends the first phase in his second phase he just pretty much gouges his eyeballs out and they shoot blue balls at you which you can parry as well and when king minos realizes that he is fucked he goes back to playing dead again and then you enter him to continue playing this very normal game speaking of normal looking at v2 you would be implored to say oh he's like v1 but better but in my opinion v2 was playing ultra kill while i was playing doom and that obviously didn't work out for me I will say that the first fight is a too bullshit considering it is the first major boss of the game. Also considering that some of us would be dog shit at this game by this point, but he can also be said to be a price of admission. 
In order to play the rest of the game, you better start playing ultra kill or fuck off. And it works. If you're not living fast and eating ass, the YouTube will fucking obliterate you. I thought I couldn't beat this guy the first time he fought, but then I realized something I completely accident. That you can fist the bullet. Yup, you can have this dude's help by if your fisted bullets hit his shotgun bullets and explode in his fucking face. I fucking love this game, but this fight is just a prelude to the fight that really solidifies V2 as an amazing boss, and that is the coin battle. Yes, I generally fought this dude again and defeated him by just using the ricochet and ultra ricochet counter attacks. This is ultra kill. Just the fact that you can fight a boss and defeat it doing something so fucking outlandish is just masterful game design. The amount of replayability is astonishing. The realm of possibilities has been broken. And it's fun. It's like you can do whatever you can think of and it's beautiful. This boss is a 10 on 10 and this isn't even the best one. But I believe everyone knows which one is going to be. Apart, splay the gore of your profane form across the stars! I will grind you down until the very sparks cry for mercy! My hands shall relish ending you here and now! Man, I can only dream of having that voice and that level of talent. This man can portray any emotion with ease. Fuck you! I'm the righteous hand of the Father! I'm special and great and I deserve to be treated like royalty! You are Pog Champ! You are not cringe! Oh shit, this blood is bad in your It's paint, asshole. Seriously, Gianni is the most based voice actor of all time, and nobody even comes close. And without Gianni's amazing voice acting, the character of Gabriel would not be the same. The anger in his voice from his first defeat. He bested by this. this thing. You insignificant fuck! This is not over! And the clarity in his voice on the second defeat. Beaten by an object, twice! I've only known the taste of victory, but this taste is... Is this my blood? <laughs> I've never known such... such relief. I... I need some time to think. We will meet again, machine. This man is a fucking magician. And I could talk about this greatness the entire video, but I won't because you already get the point. This character is now iconic. So let's talk about the actual fight. And the first one is alright, but the one I want to focus on is the second apostate of Hate Virgin. And oh god, the music. This track the Duel and Cybergrind are the GOAT trio of this game in my opinion. And my favorite version of this track is the one with Gabriel screaming at me. Gotta love that. Plus the arena is just MAMMA MIA CHEF KISSES for both the arenas even though I would recommend it against eating something for a while after fighting him. Anyways, talking about the mechanics in the first phase, he has 4 attacks. One is a 5 piece combo for which I recommend sliding backwards and then dodging the final one. A 3 piece combo in which I believe he delays the first thrust and then does another attack and then throws his quick blade. And it's kinda hard to distinguish between these two, so just be cautious. He can do normal projectile attacks, which you obviously parry, and he can teleport behind you, which he does rarely. His second phase is kinda fucked. I believe it's the same moveset, but he does it 17 times faster and he can combine his teleports with the projectile. But this isn't a guy. This is just to show you that in order to beat him, you have to master the fight to some extent. And completely demolishing this dude in my last fight made me feel like a badass. Overall, this fight is pretty much perfect and I can't take any points off for it being fast as fuck because this is ultra good. 
The only thing that this fight can improve to establish itself as one of the best of all time is attack variety, which will most likely happen when we fight a more calm version of KPL, which will not underestimate us like it did before. And that fight, if it manages to be as good as these two, then yeah, KPL will maintain his spot as a number one. Or two, you know, fuck, because real number one is. This was Ultra Hill, a perfectly rated game. Like I said in the last video that the next video will come in October, boom, have an Halloween special. Today's last day, I'm not for a month and I go everyone watch me to also do the same. The next video and my last boss ranking before I completely change the direction of the channel into something better will be Darksiders 2, which in my opinion is going to be the best boss ranking I post on this channel. So until then, see ya.